It is good to see you, creator. We are going to talk about how to add a countdown timer to OBS using the non Lewis script and the non plugin method. We're going to use a browser source. Let's get some. This is part two of the series. Part one can be found right here where we discuss how to set up the countdown timer at cdtimer.com, all the different settings and everything. But on this video, what we're going to discuss is how to add the browser source, how to remove background color, how to make sure that you are hearing the right sounds and taking sounds out and locking layers and all that cool stuff. It's going to show you a lot about how to work OBS. So let's get started. The following demonstration is what we're going to be working on. Here we go. Okay, the first thing to do is to understand the length of your song. In my case, I opened up my MP3 in VLC and found out that it is two minutes and five seconds long. So we need to go into the timer and add that time in so that the song and the timer both come to zero at the same time. So I will go to my pages and go to my, one of my timers here and click edit. And I will set the minutes to two and the seconds to five. Okay, and then I will hit publish. Now, when I go back to my pages, let's just make sure it's there. There it is, two minutes, five seconds. So I'm going to preview that and copy that URL and go into OBS. And in my demo build here, I'm going to click the plus in sources, select browser, hit OK. And in the URL space, I will paste that link by hitting Control V. And I will change the width to 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 high. 1080 high. Okay, I'm going to take this garbledy gook that they put in the header. I'm going to get rid of that by deleting it. And I will shut down source when not visible. And I will refresh browser when scene becomes active. Now that's important because when the scene becomes active, the countdown will be refreshed within the OBS browser and it will begin to start counting immediately. So the music and the count will start together. That's important. So make sure that you select refresh browser when scene becomes active. Okay, let's put the video that shows the moving clouds behind the counter. So we'll drag in the clouds-3 file right into the source area. And as you can see, it, it defaults by putting it above the browser, but we don't want that. So click and drag it and just drag it below the browser source. And then we'll drop in the MP3 uh, soundtrack as well and put that in there and drag that below the browser just for organizational purposes. Now right click on the MP4 file, the video, hit properties and make sure that it loops. That way it doesn't go away. If you don't click that, the video will play out and you'll just end up with a black screen, which is not good. So make sure that that loops, hit OK. And right click on the uh, browser source now, select filters, click the plus sign and select chroma key and when you hit OK to the chroma key it's going to automatically designate the green as invisible so if I hit OK there you go it's it goes away as you can see it's looking pretty good right now you can adjust the edge of the actual uh, countdown number by increasing this slider called similarity see how you can see that little green edge you can make that go away just a little bit by making that slide more to the right and that green edge will be removed. Okay, let's make sure that the background video is locked. That way when we select the, the countdown browser source, it won't be selected in error. So I'll just click that padlock. That way we're not selecting it by mistake. Then let's go in and resize this countdown text so it's a little bit larger. So now hit the Alt key and now you can resize the crop of the browser source. You can do the same with the upper part too. It's really great. And now you can make it a little bit larger but not too much larger because the text will start to get fuzzy if you go too big. See what I'm talking about? See how it gets kind of crunchy? So don't go too big. I think that's about right about there is a right, right size. That looks pretty decent. Next thing is the sound. And I want to make sure you understand that when you upload a sound, it will begin to play immediately, but you won't hear it. You'll see it moving in the audio mixer but you won't hear it. There is sound for the cloud audio, so I'm just gonna turn that down and ignore it. But the soundtrack, you can't hear it either. And as you can see here, it's pinging pretty hard in the red section. I'm gonna drag back that bar it's just so it's in the yellow because I don't want it to be too loud. And then I'm gonna click the gear, select advanced audio properties and find the track, which is the, the track at the bottom here, lost time MP3, that's the one. 
Under audio monitoring, I'm going to select that pull down and select monitor and output, and then the sound turns on. Okay? Now, for now, I'm going to turn that off so we can't hear it during this tutorial, but I just wanted you to understand how that works. It defaults to turning the sound off because it assumes that you don't want to have that sound picked up on your mic and get an echo going on on a live stream. That's why it doesn't have it turned on automatically. Okay, next part, we're going to click the plus sign and add some text. So under sources, click the plus sign, select text, and I'm going to type the word header one, just to let me know what it is. Hit OK. And I'm going to type the word welcome here. And I'm going to select a new font for this. So I'm going to type in the word, oh, what is it? Um, Lotto it is. L-A-T. L there it is. It will find it for you automatically. It's a search, actually. I want the Lotto bold. So I'm going to type in L-A-T. Let's see. Where did I find that thing? There it is. Lotto black. Hit OK. That looks great. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to make the color red. Hit OK. I'm going to scroll down and make the outline black. Okay. Hit OK. And there's a little outline size. I'm going to just hit the up arrow and make that a little bit thicker, which is real nice. And hit OK. And center that right on top. As you can see, it's the timer's already counted down. So I'm going to restart it by clicking Scene 2 that I have here and going back in. And it starts over again. See that? That's why it's important to set that refresh after start. It's really important. Okay, now the next thing is to put in we are coming soon text. So I'll hit the plus sign again. Go into text. Type in header 2. Hit OK. We're coming soon. Okay. Scroll down. Uh, let's see. I think that font looks great. I'm going to scroll down and make that the color red. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And I'm not going to put a stroke on that. Then I'm going to just go up to the upper left hand handle here and just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Perfect. So now if I turn the sound on, you'll get the full effect. There it is. Now there are pros and cons to using this software. Naturally, ease of use of installation is the pro. But the con is that the software is using a URL and there is no way for that URL to instruct OBS to move to the next scene. That could be potentially a con, but in my opinion, most users such as yourself will be monitoring the live stream, will be in front of your computer, and you will switch to another scene manually. You don't have to depend on software to do that for you because you'll be sitting there conversing with your live streamers as they come in during the wait period. So in most cases, it really isn't much of a downside. If you're new to my channel, think of me as a video software technology explorer. I'm on an eternal quest to go out and find all the super cool software that makes your videos super engaging and super cool. If you like what you hear, subscribe and click the bell for a new video notification. On my next video, I will be talking how to overlay a song on a video using OBS Studio. Click that link right there and I'll catch you over there. Best wishes to you. Stay strong and keep fighting. Yeah, get some.